So I'm going to talk about the commonest one, the assisted breach delivery. So the cardinal and the most important thing is that one should not uh, keep your hands off. There should be no interference. Once the breach is climbing the perineum and distending the perineum, it's time for us to give a labular episiotomy and allow the breach to come on its own till the level of the umbilicus. You should not do any kind of interference. The important points here is that you have to keep the back anterior, should not fiddle with the baby otherwise until it's required, uh, allow, uh, encourage the mother to push, and there should be an assistant available to give suprapubic pressure. There should be a team of uh, senior uh, pediatrician and an anesthetist available. Once the baby comes out till the level of the umbilicus, the next step is you pull down the cord. Now it's time for you to note that the time you have to deliver the complete baby is five to eight minutes, and you check on the cord that the cord is not short. Baby is kept anterior, very important point. Then you have to cover the baby with the breech towel so that the baby doesn't get stimulated. Keeping the back anterior and encouraging the mother to push, you will have to wait till you start seeing the axillary fold. Now here you have to note if the axilla, how is the scapula? Is it there is any kind of winging of the scapula or it is parallel to the spine? Seeing the arms, then you have to, uh, after seeing the axilla, you hook one arm after the other. After the trunk and the shoulders are disengaged, you allow the baby to hang by its own weight. And once the nape of the neck is seen, you hold the baby and do what is commonly done is Burns Marshall technique, which is in an average size baby. Sometimes the baby comes spontaneously, but otherwise you have to do Burns Marshall. Now, if the nape of the neck is not seen and the size of the baby is little big, then what you have to do is Morris's Mellie technique, wherein you uh, bring the patient to the edge of the table, allow the baby to hang one feet on either side of your forearm, left forearm, and the two fingers on the malar eminence, the index and the middle finger on the malar eminence. The other hand, you use your right hand, three fingers, and right hand, three fingers, you fork index and ring finger around the shoulder, this splints the spine, and the middle finger on the occiput to encourage flexion. Ask the assistant to give suprapubic pressure, very important point, so that the head is flexed in the backward and down, downward direction. You hold the feet and make an arc over the mother's, towards the mother and deliver the head of the baby. Now, another method which is there is use of forceps in breech vaginal delivery. Herein, the head of the baby should be in the pelvis. Ask the assistant, take the help of the assistant, wrap the baby with the towel, the warm towel, and hand over to the assistant. Here you have, uh, with the help of uh, forceps, you can actually apply pressure only on the head and it is in the flexion. So one blade is applied, followed by the other one. The blade, the, uh, uh, the pull is in the, the blade are applied in mento vertical plane. You have to apply pinards, uh, different kind of forceps, yes. So you lock, give perineal support, Apply the pro push in the downward and forward direction, maintaining the flexion and deliver the baby. Now, uh, coming to the other areas, there are three areas where there can be difficulties. One is head, which is done. The other is the breech part of the, uh, the buttocks part. So when the babies, uh, like, you know, uh, they form a wedge or they are uh, at the perineum and distending the perineum, then one has to slide the index finger of both the arms and hook out the uh, limbs towards the, giving gentle and steady traction towards the groin. 
and in extended legs sometimes the baby splints the body and they form a wedge with the head and the shoulders so you have to do this maneuver which is br bringing down the leg which is done under general anesthesia so you push the baby up a little go along the ventral surface catch hold of one feet and come out the same you have to do with the other feet So this is done under general anesthesia because any intra uterine manipulation you have to do under GA and cardinal and the most important point is keeping the back anterior. Now the commonest which we all uh, you know learn and read is pinards which is done under general anesthesia. Here again the baby feet are extended and uh, they are usually at the level of facial spine or slightly above. So you have to do the same in general anesthesia, bringing the patient to the edge of the table. Take your two finger, you have to first little disimpact the baby, go along the ventral aspect. Go up to the popliteal fossa, then you tap the popliteal fossa so that the uh, leg falls. You catch hold of the feet, but you tap the popliteal fossa, catch hold of the feet. in a pen shaped fashion and then you bring down one leg followed by the other. Now the third is the, at the, when there is problem at the level of the arms, so we have to see the scapula. If the scapula is parallel to the, issue, to the spine, that means the arms are across the chest. If there is winging of scapula, there can be partial extension of arms or complete extension of arms. So what do we have to do is, we have to hold the baby by femoropelvic grip. Now the principle here is that posterior shoulder is at a lower level than the anterior level. And when the posterior shoulder is made anterior, since the pelvis is deficient anteriorly, it comes out below the symphysis pubis much easily. So we hold the baby by femoropelvic grip, elevate the baby so that the posterior shoulder falls into the sacral hollow, go by 180 degree, I mean go uh, uh, depress, then rotate by 180 degree. and now you depress. It's an extra pelvic maneuver. You are not doing anything intrauterine. You are just holding the baby, femoropelvic grip, making use of the fact that sacral hollow, there is depression and there is space which will increase the posterior shoulder to fall and you can deliver it by rotating 180 degree. Now again, classical is done for extended arms. You have to hold the baby's feet above and towards the maternal abdomen. Again, it increases space in the sacral hollow. Posterior shoulder gets more space. You go along the ventral surface up to the, uh, beyond the elbow joint. You tap the elbow joint, catch hold of one hand and come out. You don't have to pull out. You have to give steady. You have to just bring it out gently. Then you depress the baby, take it laterally, which will increase more space in the anterior space. Go along the ventral su surface again, tap the pep uh, uh, elbow joint and bring down the other hand. So this is all about breech vaginal delivery, which is complicated and assisted breech vaginal delivery. Uh, you can see all these videos in a, a very beautiful app on mechanism of labor, which is there in your Google Drive. Google Play Store. You can download it. <laughs>